Hey, hello and welcome back. This is Greg French. Uh, today we're going to be covering Chapter 2, Part 2, Operating Systems. This is part of our A Plus uh, Computer Repair Series. Well, Linux has become very popular. Uh, the Apache is probably supporting about 80% of all the web uh, sites on the Internet. Surprisingly, uh, a large number because of its reliability. It's fast and it's not as prone to viruses as Windows uh, Microsoft products are. Creation on Unix uh, created by Linus Trevalls, a uh, very, very bright student, uh, software student. The OS kernel and source code are freely distributable or distributed. Uh, you can find it on the internet. Uh, you're allowed uh, to use it, uh, to review it, make changes to it, and create uh, new versions of the kernels or, or new. Uh, new functionality of the kernel. Popular distributions. Uh, we have SUSE. Uh, now it's owned by Novell, but it was primarily used in Europe. Uh, we have the Red Hat version, which is primarily United States, and then the Turbo Linux, uh, primarily used in Asia. Uh, used as both a server and as a desktop. Again, we have that Apache part of it. OS is uh, first introduced by the Macintosh, 1984. Uh, current version is the Leopard. Uh, they've gone through quite a different f uh, number of versions. Very powerful operating system. Not as prone to viruses as Microsoft. Consequently, many people like using it, especially your graphics people. Uh, has a lot of good graphic program graphics programs. Very user friendly. Uh, Mac OS uh, now works on Intel based computers. Apple did a very smart thing. They went to the Intel chips. Uh, Intel now provides the chips for their computers, so you can run now Mac OS and Windows. Noteworthy features. Uh, support for graphics and multimedia capabilities. Use of the uh, Finder program uh, provided, provided on the desktop. Superior plug and play capabilities. Excellent support for multitasking. Lots of nice advantages for the Mac OS. The shell between her and the kernel, and the kernel is, uh, works directly with the hardware. The OS provides user interface. Sequence of events occurring after the PC is turned on. The operating system is loaded. Running OS provides an interface, a desktop, some kind of a desktop for the user to interact with. The OS awaits for an event, such as the double click of your mouse. A user can initiate an event in several ways. Click on a menu item. Using your mouse, you can click on menu items. Enter a command in run. You can use the run dialog and actually enter a command directly. Or you can double click on any of the icons available. Uh, enter command lines in a command prompt window. We can open up a command prompt window and enter uh, commands directly. This emulates the DOS mode. Menu driven interface. Windows Explorer in Windows XP. Explorer is something that's in Windows XP and for this we have a lot of different menus and ways of selecting applications. An OS manages files and folders. The file system uh, organizes files and folders. The file system used by Windows uh, for hard drives. File allocation table, FAT, tracks uh, disk space usage. A new technology file system, the NTFS, replaced the FAT. NTFS is, uh, has kind of a journaling uh, type of feature to it, so it's more reliable in case you have a, po a power interruption. It's able to uh, quickly restore itself because as it's keeping track of what it's doing and taking notes, if you lose power and the power comes back up, it, it knows where to pick up again where it left off. FAT doesn't have those features. Organization of a hard drive or floppy disk. Platters contain uh, concentric tracks. We're going to look at these tracks. And this is where the data is stored. Tracks contain 512 byte sectors. Sector is an area on a track. It's only 512 bytes. It's standard on all hard drives. And this is where the data is located. Now a cluster contains one or more sectors. If you have a double sided disk, you'll have the same mirrored sectors on the bottom. And each one of these sectors on the top and the bottom now will comprise a cluster. The cluster could be 1,024 or two, uh, two sectors. So a cluster is where data is actually stored as a file. 
file would be covering these sectors, but it would be located by clusters. Cluster is a small unit on a disk for storing a file. It's usually a question that we see on tests. Cluster is the smallest unit on a disk for storing a file. And a cluster could be one or more sectors. Here's the diagram or picture of a platter on a, on a hard drive. Uh, they've drawn in uh, a track. Now you'd have several of these tracks and it shows the tracks are divided like in a pie shape. And these divisions are what we call the sectors. And again, a sector is only 512 bytes. Files and directories. File system hierarchy. Directories called folders in Windows. Subdirectories are child directories or subfolders inside a directory or inside another folder. And then your files. Directory table uh, lists uh, all the subdirectories and files. You have a root directory, directory for the logical drive. Uh, example would be the C drive. Path, drive, directories, file name, and file extension. Example, here we have C, uh, WP, and then a slash, your data, another slash, my files. So you can see this would be the uh, example of a path for locating a file. Here's another diagram. Hard drive is organized into directories and subdirectories that contain these files. You really need to come up with a good organization for your file systems, uh, naming uh, each one of these folders something unique so that you know what the folders contain. Similar to how you'd organize a file cabinet in an office. Partitions, logical drives. Need to understand what a logical drive is. Logical drive would be not a real drive or a physical drive, but it would be a drive that is divided up into several partitions. On your computer, you might see drive C, D, E, F, and so on. And this might be only one physical drive. So we've taken this hard drive and chopped it up into more than one logical drive. So the computer sees several drives, and really there's only one. Two types of partitions. You have primary partitions, and a primary uh, part partition can contain only one logical drive. But then you can have extended partitions, and extended partitions contain one or more of these logical drives. Logical drives sometimes called a volume, formatted using a file system such as FAT, NTFS, there are several others. Has a root directory and subdirectories. Disk management tools used to create and view partitions also format the drives. In review, Linux is becoming more and more popular. Why is that? It's stable, it's not as prone to viruses, and it's becoming very user-friendly. Shells and kernels. Need to understand what a shell is and what a kernel is. The shell is where the user interfaces with the operating system. The kernel is the actual core of the operating system that manipulates the hardware. Files and directories. How do you organize your hard drive into files and directories and subdirectories? Uh, the organization of your files is very important so that you can find things. Partitions. Logical drives. Uh, what is the difference between a primary partition and logical drives or extended partition? Primary partition can only contain one logical drive. Your extended partition contain one or more logical drives. So you could have one hard drive chopped up into several different uh, logical drives so the computer sees more than one drive that way. I always recommend to the students create at least two partitions, a primary for your operating system, and an extended for the files that you don't want to lose. Keep your files on your extended uh, partition, so if Windows goes south, you won't lose that important data that you've been that you've been creating. We'll talk more about this. Uh, activities. Uh, why is Linux becoming so popular? Do some research. Explain to me why that is. And explain what a logical drive is. Tell me the difference between a primary partition and an extended partition. Labs uh, do 2.3 Macworld, turn in the review questions, and then Lab 2.4 Linux, and also turn the review questions. Now that's it for Chapter 2, Part 2. Next, we'll be looking at Part 3. Thank you very much for your time.